All right, slicing into human DNA, aka the code of life itself, to make changes is something I presume to be a very simple and fun thing to do. <laughs> Turns out it's quite difficult and best left to experts. So lucky for me, a new breakthrough means Australian scientists are now world leaders in the field. Gene editing, hacking into the DNA of living things to make improvements, is a remarkable chunk of science that burst onto the scene about a decade ago. <laughs> Called CRISPR, it allows scientists to snip out undesirable bits of DNA and replace them with good bits. Gene editing has cured sickle cell anemia and is one day hope to cure things like muscular dystrophy, Huntington's disease, certain cancers and Alzheimer's. But so far the science has been a little clunky, which is where our Aussie team comes in. Hi. Led by Dr Sandro Ataida, at the University of Sydney, this small team has developed Seek RNA. It's kind of like CRISPR, only more elegant and precise. It's potentially a better tool because CRISPR is a bit more complicated, while Seek RNA is very simple, which makes it more elegant and potentially better. And it works so well. The possibilities are astounding. Gene editing has the potential to be used to make fruit and crops more resistant to flood and drought. It could fix mutations in animals. It could tackle global warming by disabling the gene that makes cows fart. It could even create decaffeinated coffee beans or remove allergy-triggering proteins from nuts. The seek RNA could definitely be used to stop the spread of antibiotic resistance genes and stop those bugs from spreading. The potential is unlimited here. See, Waleed, I told you structural biology was complicated. I am so thrilled. It's a really proud moment for Australian science. It's no doubt a major discovery in the field. It's tricky, Waleed. And joining us now is the University of Sydney's Dr Sandro Ataida himself. Dr Sandro, Excuse my ignorance here, but these kind of scientific discoveries, they don't seem to happen all of the time. So when you're figuring this out and you know you've nailed it, what does it feel like? It felt great, actually. Uh, I never really wanted to work with gene editing. Um, it was something that just happened to, to happen in the lab, you know, like, like a, a discovery itself. You know? <laughs> um, but and all, all the ideas that we had uh, for the project, they kind of like really materialized as we proposed, which is not very uh, common in science. Uh, most of you guys don't know, but most of the time it's like failure after failure after failure. But in this project, you know, like we make the predictions and we just bang on and it, it was right there. It was exciting, really exciting. So this exciting discovery, when could it potentially lead to exciting real world applications. How far off are we? Ooh, timeline. Let's say in next five years, oh, less, wow. perhaps. Good. Wow. There will be clinical trials that we need to test and make sure that it's safe. And it depends on the application itself, but fingers crossed. So, Sandra, I'm hearing this is so exciting. There'll be no diseases left in five years. That's my understanding <laughs> uh, of what you've said. But... No, well, that's, that's <laughs> the idea, right? That's the hope. And then... It's a hell of a hope. But is there any... Are there any dangers associated with this? Like, I just wonder, like, if you start editing people's DNA, could that lead to completely unintended mm -hmm. consequences we don't know about, either for that person or down the line in generations to come that might be even worse than the stuff we're trying to fix? Uh, yeah, I think your, your question is really right on, on the spot. Um, that's why we would try to avoid editing uh, genes, especially, like, in the embryo itself, and then because we don't know the consequences they may have during the whole... Um, development of the person, right? Um, we probably will try to use in different ways using as treatment or use for diseases that are quite specialized to certain organs that you can treat or cell types. It will depend on the case. Let's just say that there's too many possibilities at the moment ahead of us uh, that we're just going to need to test and then see which ones that work and work best and the ones that doesn't work we're going to have to troubleshoot, like science in general. Doctor, we just saw that gene editing c could possibly address climate change by targeting the gene that makes cows fart. <laughs> I don't know if this is your area of expertise, yeah. but if we did do this, is there a chance the cows would just explode? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, yeah. Um, no, what they're doing is like trying to use um, edit editing bacteria that lives inside the cow's stomach 
in order for them to absorb the, the, the methane that is produced during the digestion, and they just convert that in energy. It's like instead of using sugar as an energy source, they're just going to use the methane that the, the cow is producing there, which means that they're just going to grow fatter and fatter. Oh, wow. They Ooh. get bigger and bigger. So they just run on their own fart gas rather than <laughs> expelling it. That's right. This is what? That's an engineering right, yeah. miracle. Dr. Sandro, there's a new generation of no, scientists no, right? that are being born right now <laughs> yeah, with yeah. this because they're yeah. like, hang on a second, I get to investigate that? <laughs> I think my wife would also have some requests that you could do the same thing on me. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can guarantee that that will happen with a lot of couples, yes. Dr. Sandro, it is a rare thing that we get to solve MS and cancer and flatulence in the one interview. <laughs> yeah, we've done it here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for speaking to us tonight. You're welcome. <laughs>